Good morning, everyone. I'd like to talk this morning about the cleansing of the temple, which is the theme of my sermon and for this morning's readings. So there we have a depiction of that uh, famous event, that spectacle in the temple area. Uh, quite well represented in this uh, image. Jesus, the uh, authority figure, striding around, uh, overturning tables, scattering animals in all directions. And then uh, he is questioned about all that he was doing and why he was doing it. Well, it's a reminder that uh, on occasion, Jesus uh, uh, realized that he had to, um, to make a stand. He had to be active. And uh, it's a big contrast, of course, to the, the different strategy he adopts during the, uh, the week of Holy Week, where again he's in Jerusalem, but he's there for a much different purpose. Here it's to show his authority. And uh, in Holy Week, in the build-up to Easter, of course, it is to, to comply with his Father's will uh, and to, to die on the cross for all of us, for which case activism was not required, but a deliberate and strategic passivity. We just thank uh, our, that we have a God whose, um, whose strategies and tactics we can understand and admire, and that they are there for our benefits. Amen. Hey everyone, Reverend Bob Cotter here. Welcome to our service of Morning Prayer 2, beginning on page 101. For this, the third Sunday of Lent. First, a scripture from our Gospel reading from John 2, verse 19. Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. The Lord be with you and also with you. Beloved in Christ, we come to, uh, together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent of mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was and the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our first canticle is Venite, verses 1 to 7. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We now turn to our first reading the uh, Old Testament reading, which this morning is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. God spake all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. 
You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold any one guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your maid servant or, ma or manservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbour. This is the word of the Lord. Now turn to our appointed psalm, which you can find on page 611, and it's Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another, and one night unfurls knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language, and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens, and runs to the very end again, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure and give light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? Who oh, cleanse me from my secret faults? Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Now I turn to our second canticle, which this morning is on page 130, Saviour of the World. Jesus, Saviour of the World, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Amen. Our Gospel reading is from John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts he found men selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. 
So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned the tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, What miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, It has taken forty-six years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days. The temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said, then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Wonderful, again, familiar passage, the cleansing of the temple. In John's Gospel, as you recall, unusually it's at the very beginning of the Gospel, just after the uh, wedding at Cana, uh, whereas in the other Gospels it's the sort of culmination of the confrontation uh, that's been simmering under the surface as d diverse groups of uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and whatever else have, have come to hear him and have become increasingly alarmed and then things build to a climax uh, in Jerusalem as he then confronts them face to face in the in the center, the headquarters, so to speak, of uh, of the Jewish religion. Whereas in John's Gospel we have a different uh, understanding, a different chronology, which is also uh, equally uh, one we can appreciate that Jesus uh, is. Uh, frequently going back and forth between Galilee and Jerusalem. He doesn't just uh, uh, make it a trajectory, uh, the length of his uh, ministry, to, to arrive there at the last minute, uh, but uh, 
he he goes there at the start and at various other times we we see him going up to jerusalem so that he is a well-known figure uh and of course he's very well known uh from this uh this event this happening whatever you would uh call it here in the temple area. Well, in other Gospels, uh, particularly in Mark, say we, we get more of a sense of Jesus wanting to keep everything quiet, wanting to, to keep a low prof profile, telling the people that he's healing not to, to spread it any further and to, and to just uh, quietly uh, do what the law requires by going to the priests and having their healing confirmed. But uh, here we have a Jesus who is a, appears a more confident figure who, who also is quite prepared to, uh, to raise his head above the parapet uh, and deliberately so because uh, certainly I look on him as someone who knows exactly what happens in Jerusalem. Certainly Luke's Gospel tells us that he visited for his bar mitzvah there as a boy of 12 in Luke chapter 2, so that uh, he cannot, it cannot have been uh, something um, that he encounters for the first time when he arrives in the temple area. So I look on it as a deliberate act of uh, provocation, a kind of throwing down of the gauntlet, a kind of laying down of a marker, uh, rather than some impulsive act of anger. It's a deliberate act of uh, provocation. Um, a, a laying out of his red lines, a sort of saying what the kingdom is about as well, saying that he there is there as God's Old Testament prophets, and of course they were often very confrontational in their approach. So Jesus is in that idiom. He is there to sort of uh, say that I'm here, and part of the kingdom's purpose is to sort things out, to cleanse, to purify, to move things on, to let you know that the way you have... Uh, uh, allowed your religious practices to evolve is problematic and that I'm here to reform them. And of course, uh, uh, in the passage, it becomes, uh, as it often does in the Bible, a question of uh, authority. How? Why do you have the authority? How can you prove to us that you have a th the authority to do this uh, this act of uh, of cleansing in this very... A uh, very robust way. Um, other aspects of of Jesus' personality, I think that that come across here, the the courage, which is often maybe only reserved for the uh, for the for the whole period of the arrest and the crucifixion, but throughout uh, the Gospels, we see Jesus, who really is physically and morally courageous, who is quite prepared to say the difficult things, quite prepared. Yes, also to be diplomatic when diplomacy is required so that his ministry would be able to to uh, continue. But he is certainly a heroic figure. Um, but it's also uh, in that the short few years of the ministry of Jesus, all a question of timing. Well, I always certainly feel, particularly in John's Gospel, and I'm sure many other commentators and yourselves would agree with me, Jesus seems very much more in control of everything in John's Gospel. He is uh, very strongly and obviously setting the agenda. He's in charge in any sense of there, there might be an emotional or impulsive outburst is mitigated against the sense that, that this is a calculated act of uh, um, yeah, of protest. So we should uh, learn from this a bit about Jesus and a bit about our uh, about our own activity as Christians. Jesus is a much more complex figure than than we often reduce him to. Quite often we see the compassion, we see the the uh, the passivity. Quite often. Uh, in relation to the, uh, the events of Holy Week, but we forget to see the intelligence. For example, the number of times he uses the quickness of his wit uh, uh, to be able to defuse a situation, to, uh, to uh, ask a question in response to a question, to be able to, um, yeah, to use all the, the powers at his, uh, at his uh, behest uh, to be able to preach and to teach and to confront 
in a variety of ways. So he chooses this particular method, uh, uh, very active method, um, to let people know that he has arrived and that uh, they, well, they, well, of course, uh, will will later take account of that, and will that will certainly later lead to uh, his arrest. But of course, that's all part of God's plan. He needs to be arrested so that the 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 whole events of Holy Week and the aftermath can ensue. So, as human beings, as Christians, we also need to be aware that there are so many different strategies and. Uh, and ways that we have of confronting the world and opposition that we meet and uh, yeah using Jesus compassion but also uh, his passion and certainly also his planning and uh, not always assuming that we need to be just as passive as Jesus is sometimes uh, um, portrayed uh, in, in, in a simplistic way and we thank God that he is uh, our saviour and that he is our robust and uh, uh, very much intelligent, loving saviour. Amen. Now we turn to our prayers uh, on page 112. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us, renew us by your Holy Spirit. We now turn to our collects. We begin with the collect for this, the third Sunday of Lent. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the Ash Wednesday collect. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made. Forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally by your mercy attain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we are always walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take this opportunity at this near halfway point through uh, Lent, this third of six Sundays, to use a portion of the litany which is set aside for periods of uh, penance, including Lent. God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, giver of life, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, three persons in one God, have mercy on us. Save us, good Lord, from all sin and wickedness, from pride, hypocrisy and conceit, 
from envy, hatred and malice and all uncharitableness. Save us, good Lord, from sins of thought, word and deed, from the lusts of the flesh, from the deceits of the world and the snares of the devil. Save us, good Lord, from fire, storm and flood, from disease, pestilence and want, from war and murder and from dying unprepared. Save us, good Lord, from all false doctrine, from hardness of heart, from contempt of your word and commandment, and from the evil of schism. In times of sorrow and in times of joy, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, save us, good Lord. Save us, Lord Christ, by the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood and obedience, by your baptism, fasting and temptation. Save us, Lord Christ, by your ministry in work, word and work, by your mighty acts of power and by your preaching of the kingdom. Save us, Lord Christ, by your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial. Save us, Lord Christ. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension and by your sending of the Holy Spirit. Save us, Lord Christ. Strengthen the faithful, comfort and help the faint-hearted. Raise up those who fall and drive out all evil. Hear us. Good Lord, support and encourage all who are in poverty, unemployment or distress. Protect those whose work is dangerous and keep in safety all who travel. Hear us, good Lord. Keep fathers, mothers and children united in their family life. And give them wisdom and strength in times of stress. Hear us, good Lord. Heal the sick care for the old and lonely, comfort the bereaved. Hear us, good Lord. Remember the poor who long to hear good news. Give us the will to strengthen them through acts of generous love. Hear us, good Lord. Show your pity on victims of strife, on the homeless and the hungry, on prisoners and on all who live in fear. Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Hear us, good Lord. Guide and direct all who influence others through the written or the spoken word, and inspire all who serve humanity in science, industry and art. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and keep all your people. Hear us, good Lord. Teach us to use the resources of the earth to your glory, that all may share in your goodness and praise you for your loving kindness. Saviour of the world, forgive our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may amend our lives according to your holy word. Share with all your people the joys of your eternal kingdom. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. I'd like to finish with a well-known uh, hymn to many of you. It's by Timothy Dudley Smith, who's, who's written quite a number of very good modern hymns. And this one to the tune of the London Derriere, uh, and it relates uh, nicely to our theme because it reminds us of Jesus, the authority figure, yes, Jesus, the figure of compassion, but also the figure whose love was demonstrated by his actions on the cross. O Christ the same, through all our stories, pages, our loves and hopes, our failures and our fears. Eternal Lord, the King of all the ages, unchanging still amid the passing years. O living word, 
the source of all creation who spread the skies and set the stars ablaze o christ the same who wrought our whole salvation we bring our thanks to you for all our yesterdays o christ the same the friend of sinners sharing our inmost thoughts the secrets none can hide still as of old upon your body bearing the marks of love in triumph glorified o son of man who stooped for us from heaven o prince of life in all your saving power o christ the same to whom our hearts are given we give our thanks to you for this the present hour o christ the same secure within whose keeping our lives and loves our days and years remain our work and rest our waking and our sleeping our calm and storm our pleasures and our pain o lord of love for all our joys and sorrows for all our hopes when earth shall fade and flee o christ the same beyond our brief to-morrows we bring our thanks to you for all that is to be. Oh. 